The Sega Genesis is one of the most beloved consoles of all time, and there is currently groups of people out there looking to preserve the original experience you get when playing this console, whether it's through software emulation, FPGA hardware emulation, or just getting a good mapping of the hardware so we could learn how to recreate it. I'm now part of a team that's looking to archive the exact sound signal and measurements coming from the audio output of original Genesis consoles. That way people working on either any of these new solutions or things like the Triple Bypass Project who want an accurate recreation of the sound signal can do so with precise measurements to bounce their designs off of. This video is kind of an OCD walkthrough of how we get the measurements and the exact methods that we do in as accurate a way as possible. If you'd like to contribute to this project, check out the video and see if you'd be willing to buy the necessary equipment as well as do the measurements the same way we do, or just enjoy a nerdy video showing some behind the scenes stuff on how we're doing some of this research. But either way, I hope this leads to many good things in the future, and if nothing else, it'll definitely lead to a more precise and tweaked version of Triple Bypass, as well as possibly some Mr. Implementation of the audio circuits. So, here you go. I'll start out by showing the exact hardware setup we use and why we use it this way. First, we have a Genesis connected and you could use any ROM cart for this. You don't have to flash your own test disk. I think even with some of the SD access noise of a ROM cart, it's not gonna affect it other than when you actually read the ROM in. One thing to note is we do recommend using hardwired controllers as the ones we've tested seem to be fine like Crix's Joys, but others might cause issues. I'm also using a cable direct cable to go right from the headphone port. And you might notice that the headphone port is up all the way to number 10. Normally when I play Genesis with the headphone port as audio, I leave it at about 7.5. But for these tests, we think it's best to just leave it up all the way so it's consistent across each model. You'll also notice that I have the audio cable carefully run away from everything else. Because while I can't imagine that the USB cable will interfere, I just want absolute every chance of it being a perfect recording. I have the 3.5 audio cable going into one of these phono adapters, and you might notice that line one is the red connector. That's just a reminder that because something's red doesn't necessarily mean it's the right plug. So please test with the 240p test suite before recording to make sure your left and right channels are not swapped. One other thing to note is we're using a self-powered USB hub. So make sure to use a hub that's not powered at all by the computer. You want one that has its own power supply just to reduce any noise from the USB bus, which is a common thing. I have everything hooked up to Goldwave now, which I'll show in a second, but just a few more things about the recording. If you use a CRT to do the recording and you're using a Genesis One, I recommend just pulling out the video cable right when you're ready to start the process. So you'll see how easy the software is in a minute, but when you get it all queued up, just pull that right out and then hit the A button to start recording. It's not a big deal and there's pretty much no chance of interference, but if you're using a CRT, it's one chance over none. Whereas if you're using a processor or a capture card, you're pretty much safe. Now, obviously, if you have a Genesis 2, that's going to be almost impossible. So it's just one of those things where if you have the ability to do it, just do it because, but it probably won't be a factor. And the very last thing to look at is the audio capture device itself. Uh, we have figured that these are the ones that seem to get the best quality recordings at a reasonable price. And I found that if you leave the knobs in the middle, you don't get a, a good enough recording. It does tend to spike. So I like to leave them at just one quarter over um, and try to get them as even as possible. The, uh, the software we use for analysis would be able to compensate, but the better the original recording, the easier it is. Of course, also this is the mono or stereo button, so make sure that you have that toggled. And that's pretty much it. So it was a detailed description of everything that was probably a little too detailed. Uh, I promise if you set one of these up, it's actually much easier than it seems. Recording the audio test pattern is very easy. You just need to make sure that everything is set correctly. 
So I usually go into the sound control panel and find the device. So there's the Lexicon Alpha. Uh, I don't have it listen, that's really up to you. Level is 100. And I have it set to what we're going to be recording at, 16-bit 48K. I think you could override this with the software, but better safe than sorry. So once that's set under Options and File Formats in Goldwave, make sure to select, select that your default recording is at 16-bit PCM stereo. Then go in and check the device settings and make sure that your recording device is the Lexicon and that it's at 16-bit and that there's nothing weird here. 100% volume, use new file attributes. Then just go in and hit new. And then it's only a one minute recording, but I leave it at two minutes just for a quick buffer. And before we start, just to note that you're not hitting the new record button. You're hitting record inside the, the one that we just created. This will ensure all your settings are the same. So I have the vision window open in my capture card so you can see what's going on. Uh, but what I'm going to do is start recording first and then hit A to start the process of playing the audio file. Now I start paying attention usually around the 50 second mark. You'll see over here as soon as this goes from red that the recording is actually finished. There we go. And then I give it a few seconds and hit stop. When I'm done, I always aim like a second or so over and then delete whatever is remaining. Um, the reason I do that is so that you have a good idea of just the basic ground noise that's going. Now, don't do this in your recordings. I just want to show an example of why. When you go to the maximize volume in Goldwave, it takes the noise floor and then maximizes everything else. So while we were recording in nothing, that's all the feedback. And then moving it over a few seconds to do a blank file is zero. So we'll be able to use that information even though it doesn't look like anything's there. That'll be used as a verification in the recording. But once again, don't do what I just did with the maximize. Just uh, whenever you're done recording, move it over about a second and that's it. And then when you're done, go to File and Save As. Um, you'll be able to, uh, to mark it with whatever the new default format is. Uh, just reference the website for that. So I'm just going to call it Bob for now. And I always go into Attributes just to make sure that it's still signed as 16-bit PCM stereo. If you forgot to do the defaults, this Save As will show something else. And that means that you would have converted it twice. So if you go into attributes after recording and it doesn't show this, you might want to re go back, check your defaults, and do it over again. It only takes a minute, literally, so <laughs> not that big a deal. But it is in the right spot. It is 16-bit stereo, and we're hitting save. So while this video is a bit long compared to the amount of time that it actually takes to get something like this done, uh, I just wanted to give great detail as to what we do. And if you decide to help the project, thank you very much. Or if you're just uh, happy checking out the behind the scenes, what we do in our nerd free time, then that's awesome too. But uh, thanks very much, and I'll see everybody next time.